In this tutorial, we will demonstrate some of the other methods that Dakota provides for exploring a problem space. Previous tutorial videos focused specifically on Dakota's multi-dim underscore parameter underscore study method, which produces an evenly spaced grid of points in the problem space. Here, we'll take a look at some other Dakota methods that are tailored to different types of analyses, such as optimization and uncertainty quantification. We'll stick with the same Rosenbrock function from previous tutorial videos in order to better illustrate the methods themselves. Our first example is an optimization method. Optimization refers to the process of maximizing or minimizing some function relative to some set. Often, we use optimization to try and find the best value of some function output. For our Rosenbrock curve function, there is a unique minimum output value of 0 at the input coordinates 1, 1. Here, we have an unfinished Dakota study, which will populate with the keywords we need to perform an optimization study. In the responses block, let's add the keyword numerical gradients. This simply states that we'll be computing numerical gradients for the optimization algorithm. The numerical gradient will guide the optimization method downhill to a local minimum of the function. The keyword fd underscore step underscore size refers to the finite difference step size performed by Dakota when evaluating the gradient. By default, Dakota will perform finite differencing in the forward direction, which is faster but less accurate. Central finite differencing, which is more accurate but also more expensive to calculate, can be specified as well with additional keywords in the responses block. Let's take a look at the method block. In previous Dakota studies, the first keyword you saw was multidim underscore parameter underscore study, but now we will be using the keyword conmin underscore frcg. This keyword indicates the use of the Fletcher Reeves conjugate gradient algorithm in the conmin optimization software package for bound constrained optimization. The keywords that follow conmin underscore frcg in the method block specify our configuration of this method. The keyword convergence tolerance is used to specify the convergence criteria under which the algorithm terminates. The keyword max iterations is used to indicate the computational budget for this optimization. In this case, a single iteration includes multiple evaluations of Rosenbrock's function for the gradient computation steps and the line search steps. Let's see if Dakota can find the minimum of the Rosenbrock curve using this input file. After running Dakota and collecting the typical output files, you can use the Dakota GUI to create iteration history plots which show how the objective function and design parameters change in value during the optimization. By looking at these graphs, you can intuitively see how the method hones in on the minimum value of 0 for the Rosenbrock curve, located at 1, 1. You can also view the points found by the optimization method using a 3D scatter plot, as shown here. More details on how to create these plots will be presented in future screencasts. Our next example is an uncertainty quantification method. Uncertainty quantification is the process of determining the effect of input uncertainties on output response metrics. Let's demonstrate how to run a Dakota study using Monte Carlo random sampling in order to perform uncertainty quantification. For this example, Dakota will select 200 design points from within the parameter space, evaluate the value of Rosenbrock's function at all 200 points, and then perform some basic statistical calculations on the 200 response values. We begin the method block by designating sampling as the method of choice. The keywords that follow sampling in the method block specify a configuration of the sampling method. The specific type of sampling we will use is Monte Carlo sampling, which is specified by the combination of the keywords sample type and random. The samples keyword specifies the number of samples to take. The seed keyword allows the user to obtain repeatable results from multiple runs. If a seed value is not specified, then Dakota's sampling methods are designed to generate non-repeatable behavior. Finally, the response levels keyword allows the user to state specific response function output values for which Dakota should calculate statistics. You can specify one or more response level values for each response function. Here, we will simply instruct Dakota to estimate statistics when our response function value is at 100. Now let's run Dakota and take a look at some of the results from the sampling method. Again, each of the plots that we'll be looking at can be generated using the Dakota GUI, but the specifics of how to create those plots will be covered in future tutorials. Dakota outputs the mean, standard deviation, skewness, and kurtosis estimates for each of the response functions. This is a very large standard deviation due to the fact that the Rosenbrock function varies by three orders of magnitude over the input domain. The skewness is positive, meaning that this is a right-tailed distribution, not a symmetric distribution. Finally, the kurtosis indicates that it is a strongly peaked distribution. 
The 95% confidence intervals on the mean and standard deviations are shown as well. There are several correlation matrices produced by Dakota as well. Correlations provide an indication of the strength of a monotonic relationship between input and outputs. Dakota outputs data for simple correlation, partial correlation, simple rank correlation, and partial rank correlation. This video merely scratches the surface of what Dakota is capable of when it comes to methods you can employ to search your problem space. In addition to optimization and uncertainty quantification, Dakota also supports a host of methods in the categories of sensitivity analysis and calibration. You can also combine different methods for more sophisticated studies, such as optimization under uncertainty. If you want to learn more about Dakota methods, consult Dakota's online reference manual. If you want to get started quickly without exploring all of the methods that Dakota has to offer, the Dakota GUI has a quick start wizard designed to help new users select the most appropriate Dakota method for their problem.